Okay, it is now time to look at classes and uh, structures, or uh, for short, struct uh, types. And uh, this is, of course, um, you know, uh, we're now getting into maybe not the most basic things of all uh, in Swift. But I, I say that only because conceptually it's um, working with classes is... Um, maybe one of the, the harder things to get your mind wrapped around uh, when you're just starting off. And I think part of that just has to do with, with figuring out when and why you're going to start using them. And this is sort of why I like um, game programming too, because uh, when you work with games, you know, you get um, such a visual representation of your class. So uh, what we'll do is, of course, write some code here that kind of hypothetically sets up a game character. But, you know, in an actual gaming tutorial, which I'll teach soon enough with Swift, uh, you get to actually see the, the, the character on the screen and kind of move it around, things like that. Uh, okay, so uh, let's let's do two things at once here. We're going to create a struct, and um, this is not a class, okay? It's a structure, structure I should say, that uh, is going to contain two properties, all right? And the first property is going to be x equals uh, 0 and var y equals zero and uh, there's actually already a structure built right into uh, uh, the, the foundation here that uh, already has the, an X and Y property some of you might uh, know it it's a CG point uh, and then we're gonna create a class okay so uh, let's uh, make this uh, Mario brother and uh, if I if only I knew the last name of the Mario brothers okay then I could put that in there but uh, hey, get rid of that what's going on there but I'm going to call this uh, Mario Brother as this and this could either be a uh, Mario character or it could be a uh, Luigi character. All right. And this too can have uh, uh, properties. Okay. So let's make one be uh, var xp uh, and this will be uh, zero. All right. And let's do another one like var has a multiple, if I can spell multiple, multiple lives equals false. I keep doing that. <laughs> false <laughs> or false say. Uh, and then uh, we'll do another one that is uh, var about uh, image name. Okay, kind of hinting at uh, you know potential game use here. And we'll make this an uh, optional string. All right, so we're not going to give it a value uh, initially. Uh, now uh, let's do something a little tricky. Let's make a, a variable that is going to equal the um, or, or be used as a um, something to store the vectors for the character. All right, and oddly enough, we've got our little structure up here called character vector. So what we'll do is write vector and then equals character vector. And for now, uh, let's not give this any sort of value. Okay. All right. We'll just come down here and. Um, Let's uh, now create a variable that is going to equal uh, our Mario brother. All right, so uh, we'll assume this is going to actually be Mario that we're working with. So we're going to set it to the class type. That's Mario brother. All right, and uh, we're just going to initialize this by writing back the class name uh, with parentheses, opening and closing parentheses, and you'll see that uh, we are already getting over here in our output window the properties that are included with um, Mario Brother di by default. Okay, so XP0 has multiple lives, false. Uh, the string name is uh, is nil, okay, it's optional, it has no value right now. And then our uh, vector, it's showing us is X0, Y0. Now, um, if we were to kind of take a step back here, do our opening parentheses, and then hit the escape button on the keyboard, you'd see that we can put in uh, what are called member-wise initializers. All right, and when you create a, a, a structure like this, uh, you can either go with nothing, or you can go by f with filling in all of the the potential uh, properties uh, that you've got. So it's it's listing out uh, that all right, you, you're gonna now you're gonna give me something. You're gonna give me an X. All right, so let's give it, give it an X. And let's give it uh, a 10. And actually, you know, if this was a kind of more, a, a realistic character vector, uh, you might use your vector uh, uh, to make the character jump, for example. So vector sounds like a fancy term, but just imagine that every time the character jumped, he moved uh, three pixels to the right and 10 pixels upwards, and then eventually gravity just took him down. Okay, so that might actually be kind of an appropriate uh, vector right there. And uh, now you're seeing that we've got x3 and y uh, 10 over here 
So we initialized a Mario brother, which then went and found out the or set the character vector. Okay, and we can come down here now and write uh, Mario. We just want this Mario, the instance of it, not the class itself. And we could access that vector by going over here and writing vector. And can you imagine what I'm going to write next? Dot x. Okay, so we've got two properties here, right? We've got this property, and then this has its little sub property. So we could go and we could uh, now set this to uh, something else if we wanted, right? And hey, look at that. It's showing us that the vector is now 6 and 10. And we can do that with any of our properties for Mario. Okay, we can get rid of uh, Mario dot uh, has multiple lives. We can now set this to true. Maybe we got one of those mushrooms that gives you an extra life. Uh, and uh, of course, we've also got uh, this nice little property, our image name. And we can set this to be something more appropriate like Mario. Okay. So what happens, um, you know, as we're kind of programming and we th think, oh, I got to backtrack a little bit here. You know what? Uh, not only do I need an X, a Y, I also need a Z. So you go in here and you say var uh, Z equals uh, zero. So now our character vector has a uh, Z property, uh, but when we created our character vector over here we only supplied in uh, two properties well that's why we're getting that uh, error right there and to fix that we can now cl include in the Z hit escape it should give you well, maybe it's not I thought it was gonna be nice give us a little hint <laughs> and uh, I'll just go ahead and set that uh, to Z and that should uh, give us uh, no problems uh, anymore now, here's another cool thing. We can include functions inside of our uh, class. All right, so um, just same way that we created functions before, we're gonna write func, uh, and then let's say make jump. All right, and this would be a typical thing you would see inside of a uh, game character class. And uh, you know, for right now, we'll just put in here print line, made the character jump. And uh, to call that, we'll come down here and just write uh, Mario dot make jump, and you can see that um, the compiler knows that there's a function inside of there, and it will go ahead and fill that in for us. And you can see that uh, after calling this line, there we go, uh, it uh, it's now spitting back that uh, that message for us that made the character jump. And uh, you know, of course, keep in mind that uh, when um, when you're programming uh, with uh, when you're making a more of a like a real game uh, your classes uh, aren't necessarily going to all exist in the the same file like this uh, we would probably go and create a separate dot uh, swift file which is just going to contain uh, that class uh, otherwise you know you, you'd end up with you know class here uh, class here class here and so on like that which is not a problem you can uh, it's perfectly fine to do that but um, you know, just by having separate files, it keeps things a little bit cleaner, more manageable. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and take um, some of what we got and um, put that into the actual uh, uh, game scene.swift file. So this part right here, or these parts, I should say, the struct in our class, we can go and write outside of uh, the class itself. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just put that right there. And again, kind of illustrating, you know, that well, maybe this is a, something that'd be better off put into its own uh, file, but uh, that's fine. It'll work right outside here, and uh, the game scene's gonna have no problem figuring out what we're talking about when we go and we take uh, these lines and just paste them into our uh, did move to view st um, statement. And um, to get some kind of feedback that things are working, let's go ahead and just uh, publish this real quick. And uh, just check our output window. Okay, uh, of course we saw this message. Things are getting real now. And then uh, made the character jump. Okay, so uh, that function uh, did occur when we ran uh, this line right here. And I'm going to show you guys something that I did not know about uh, until recently. Well, of course, Swift is a relatively new language, so uh, that's why. But uh, let's go and set uh, what, what's called a property observer. And remember how we created our um, 
our image name over here with uh, no value to it, or even if it did already have a value, I think this would work fine. We can uh, we can observe when uh, a value is set. All right, so look at this. We put an opening and closing bracket um, right after the, uh, setting up what we've already got, uh, and then we just put will set right here, and put in there image name to an opening bracket. Uh, in a closing bracket again, then put did set like so. Uh, this time we don't actually have to put in that uh, image name. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to run this code right before uh, a value is given to this. <laughs> now, if you're, uh, you know, kind of an old timer, the programming, <laughs> that's pretty cool. All right, so uh, about to set um, image, and uh, we could go ahead in here and put in what the image name is uh, about to be. Or actually, I, I'll have to run this to make sure that, that I'm correct in saying that. It might print that nothing is going to be set there because it hasn't been set yet, right? We'll set. I don't know. Well, well, let's find out. Well, we might be just spitting back out the same two statements right here, but this is not really the point. The point is, is that you, you know, you do something here that uh, would occur before this is set. Okay. So you know, maybe if um, uh, a more appropriate thing to set would be something like, "Is the character dead?" Right. And before you set it to be true, you you know. Do something in the class that uh, you know you would before the character dies. Uh, do something here that would occur after this is set. Okay, and uh, that should be good to go. Let's uh, scoot back up here, and now you'll remember that um, you know the class does not actually have the image name right away. We gave it that name of Mario, so we should be seeing something over here when we run this. Okay, well, both times it gave us the, the name that it was going to be. So that, that that's fine. That makes sense. Uh, about a set image optional. All right. So, um, and I'm kind of curious. What happens if we do this? Force a value from it. Well, it no longer says optional over there. Okay, so just forcibly unwrapped. The value of uh, image name. So anyway, um, meditate on uh, that little bit of code for a moment.